This is Divorce, Happy, and Successful, the number one spiritually focused self-empowerment podcast for divorced parents that's dedicated to helping you live the fulfilling life you deserve and experience the happiness you long for. Let's get into today's show with our host, W. Mark Watts. Hey, everybody, it's W. Mark Watts, and thank you for coming and hanging out with me for another episode of the podcast. And in today's episode, we are going to take a quick, brief look at co-parenting plans or agreements. Just what are they and why might they benefit you? So first and foremost, co-parenting plans or agreements are quite simply, it's just a written document that outlines how parents are going to raise their kids after separation of div- or divorce. Now, the beauty of it is, is one of the big pluses is that it's oftentimes much less expensive than a traditional legal divorce. So, you know, where there's full blown out attorneys on both sides that can get very expensive, especially depending on what part of the country or the world that you live in, as opposed to uh, using a co-parenting plan, which is administered or assisted under the guise of a divorce mediator and that mediator may or may not be an attorney and simply put a divorce mediation is nothing more than just another process in which divorcing spouses try to sit down and negotiate an acceptable divorce agreement or plan that will help you know that's aided by the help of a third party i.e the mediator And so the mediator's job is basically, so if you have two sides, so if you have two parties, uh, the spouses, that you believe that you will be able to come to an agreement at some point, or you think that, you know, the atmosphere is good enough and there's not enough, you know, there's there's enough uh, shared understanding that you can come to an agreement without going through the formal legal process, then mediation is definitely an option that you should look at because it can be very effective. And so the mediator's role is basically to bring the two parties together and then to just kind of help them communicate and also help guide them with the types of things that need to be included or should be considered about being included in the type of agreement. And then once that agreement is done, then of course you can actually make that official because some of the items in the agreement may be may fall under the jurisdiction of the courts. So at the end, you might wanna have that filed in the county or the or city in, in which you pre- reside in case there's ever an, an issue down the road. So here's some of the things that are t- usually always included in a co-parenting agreement or plan. So it's just gonna be a general statement about what you're attempting to do, usually about the shared responsibility for important decision-making, um, and as well as the daily and weekly and monthly routines. So uh, the shared, you also wanna discuss the sharing of parental responsibilities. So who's, you know, which items need to be communicated to both parents like in edu- like educational type things, health related things, religious upbringing, et cetera, et cetera. So those things you actually want to include in there. And then you want to include things like the specific or actual time sharing and residential arrange- arrangement. So where would the kids primarily stay? What's the routine like? Any specific activities that they have to be a part of, et cetera. So you want to outline those as well. And then you also want to make a part of that the agreement time period. Usually it's between six and 12 months and and it can actually roll over or after that time period, it can be ended and then you can create a new one if, you know, if the case warrants. So those are the types of things that you want to include in that parenting agreement, uh, co-parenting agreement, I guess. I say parenting, but, you know, we have this nice term called co-parenting, so I'll stick with it for now. And then the mediator's job is to advise and help you both communicate, come to an agreement, make really good decisions, solid de- decisions, because it's oftentimes more advantageous for all parties involved if you feel like you may not be able to agree to things on your own. It's This is one great way to get those agreements down in black and white 
and make sure that these things are discussed in advance so that everyone has a great understanding of of what we're trying to accomplish and how you're going to accomplish it. And it also can lend itself to giving a sense of stability for the kids as well, because they have a better understanding of the things that are being laid out and how things will flow, because that is one of the biggest things that kids are when they're tasked with or one of their biggest challenges is when a divorce occurs, just how is life going to transpire now? What's going to happen and where do they fit in and how is it going to happen? You know, who's going to be involved, when and where? So they need more details. They need to know they need to have a picture of how their life is going to unfold. And so this parenting, this co-parenting agreement or plan can do that for all parties involved. And then when things come up, you have something that you can go to that you can say, hey, we agreed to do it this way and now we can proceed this way with it. So it takes some of the guesswork out by making you think about it in advance, having those direct conversations so that you can get it down because there are going to be decisions that are need to, that will need to be made, you know, all types of financial decisions. You know, kids have many activities and there's travel plans involved and there's the home housing arrangements. And again, going into schooling and doctor visits and all those types of things. And as they get older, you know, you're starting to talk about um, the different types of relationships and, and, and responsibilities that they will start to have. Just how do you start to manage those things and think about them in advance? So a co-parenting plan, a co-parenting agreement is a really good way, really a really solid step in the success of your post-divorce life. And again, that's what this whole show is about, is because is we want to really be as successful and really enjoy our post-divorce lives. And this is a tool that can help you if needed. So that's all I have for you today. Anything in this episode served you, please listen to it more than one time. If you think it may serve someone else, please share it with them. Wherever you see this, subscribe, rate the show so that we can reach more people and really help as many people as we can going into the new year. So until the next time we talk, do the very best you can each and every day for yourself and for your kids, because that will move you toward your own personal post-divorce paradise. And you deserve it, my friend. You definitely do deserve it. So I talk with you later. Take care, everybody, and be good. Bye now. You've been listening to the Divorce Happy and Successful Podcast. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. Until next time, stay focused and keep moving forward.